I think to really understand pedal artery interventions, we have to talk about the below ankle anatomy. It's not something that everybody does or sees, but I think it's important and becoming more important as time goes on. We know that the vessels below the ankle, it's the final major outflow of the leg. There are three commonly described anastomotic loops, the pedal plantar loop, the deep pedal arch, and the arcuate artery. So let's go over all these. So when it comes to the pedal plantar loop, this is the most common when you see great cases that are done live, when you see great cases on social media. This is really the, the loop that people are intervening on or tackling. It's, it's complete in approximately 90% of cases. It connects the anterior and posterior circulation. And as, a, as you can see here, a good landmark when you're actually intervening on these patients is an AP view like this and looking really at the base of the first and second metatarsal, the so-called first metatarsal space, which gives rise to the deep perforating artery and ultimately anastomosis with the lateral plantar artery and back to the PTA. So it's kind of good landmarks, and I'll show you what that looks like. The next uh, anastomotic loop is really the deep pedal arch, and this one is really formed by the medial plantar artery and the medial tarsal artery, and you know really becomes a dominant communication or connection when you have forefoot amputations or significant disease or occlusion of the pedal plantar loop. Unfortunately, it tends to be na narrow, it's difficult to navigate, it tends to be very fragile, and so it's not really something that's easily intervened upon. Finally, we've got the uh, anastomotic loop formed by the arcuate artery, and again, this is a branch of the dorsalis pedis artery at the first metatarsal space. You get the arcuate artery, which then anastomoses with the lateral tarsal artery this time, and then back to the anterior tibial. And what you can see here is that it's a more proximal communication. There's your pedal plantar loop, which arises a little bit more distal. And obviously this, when it's present, uh, which is rare, uh, gives good supply to the dorsal digital arteries. So what does that look like in real time? So what I did was I took Marco Manzi's uh, image from his article. Uh, to show you what a normal pedal plantar loop looks like. And the key finding here, the key landmark, again, is between the base of the first and second metatarsal. You can see there's your pedal plantar loop. Here's a CLI patient I had with all the classic risk factors, diabetes, et cetera, uh, who had you know, significant forefoot ischemia and gangrene, and so we were reconstructing the pedal plantar loop, and I wanted to show you a couple of landmarks. So as far as catheter systems, obviously we don't, we're not gonna talk about those, but again, all the microcatheters you're familiar with that you use in the coronaries, you use in the periphery, regalia, fielder, command 18, uh, command 14, all these guide wires, V14, et cetera, all do well in this space. So again, if you look at this loop, I want you to notice the yellow arrow. What I'm trying to show you is notice the subtle prolapse or the buckling of the guide wire there. That's the tip off that that's the first branch or the deep perforating artery. And again, I'm gonna show you that. And then if you look at the base of the third or fourth uh, metatarsal, you can see, depending on the obliquity of the AP view, that that's typically going to give you um, the second branch or the second connection into the lateral plantar artery. Obviously, there are pedal loop anatomic variations, and so you have to be aware of these because not everybody has the classic uh, pedal plantar loop anatomy that, we're, we, that we think about.